everyone again uh, to our end user training session two for dispatch. Um, again, today we're going to a few different new things, uh, running into some different situations you might have on your day on dispatch. Things like, you know, we did some cancel calls last time, but transferring calls, um, do that's some more emergency calls, or maybe there's more than one patient. Uh, some few other things you can run into. Then we'll start talking about setting up trips for future dates of service, and then look at setting up recurring schedules for those folks that keep going on the same trip to the same place over and over and over again. All right, before I get too far ahead, and I got some questions Michael emailed a little bit earlier uh, about the system and cover those. Uh, is Michael on the on the call yet? Hey, sir. All right. Um, Michael, some of these things maybe we can talk about a little bit after. Yeah, that's what I thought. I gave you very little notice, so if you feel... No like problem. Today, great, and perhaps we can clean up some other time. Yeah, and then uh, we'll answer a few of these as, as we can as we go through here. Um, but also, uh, for anybody else, were there any other questions that we ran into uh, since the last time we chatted last week? Not right now. Uh -huh. All right, well, fantastic. Uh, with that, a uh, little brief review here. Uh, initially, again, into my dashboard, I see that there are no units on duty, so I want to make sure I have units on duty. So once again, I'm going to go to my on-duty module, and I can pick which fleet I want. I'm looking for in terms of my units default. We'll start with fleet one here. Again, I hit the little box zooms in on that unit and I can go ahead and put it on duty. Uh, and I think one of your questions, Michael, was uh, adding a calendar button here for the start time and end time. Uh, in terms of that change, that would be a, a application code change. Uh, I will make sure to put that request into the developers. So uh, hopefully in a future version, we can have that for you. Um, currently though, if it is again the same day, I can just put the time in, the system assumes the same date. I will set this to our training fleet. We will go ahead and add our crew members. And grab another one here. Nice little double click. Either way, click and drag, double click. And I will put this unit on duty. And again, we'll pick on one of the other fleets here. Let's go with 503. And if we talked about the other day, if it's a 24-hour shift, a 12-hour shift on two different days, again, I do currently have to put that time and date in fully. So we'll say till tomorrow. It's over a year, isn't it? <laughs> you know, some days feel longer than others. That's not even Monday. <laughs> uh, exactly. All right. And again, we will put this on our training fleet. And let's say I want to jump down to the L's. So I hit L here. It takes me right to the L's. Who we have? We'll go with Frank and T's because I'm a fan of T's. So I can again hit the letters to correspond to the last names. And we'll go with Tyler. And we'll put that on duty. So again, putting on duty, I have to do it from my duty module. Start times and end times with the field that are required. If it's the same day for the start and the end, if it's today's date, I, all I need to do is put in the times for the 24-hour clock. If they are different dates, I have to put in the full date and time. All right, any questions there? No, there are no. All right, back to our dashboard. Let's go ahead, we're gonna put in a call here. Just a nice little regular call. You can review and then we'll look at some things that might happen here. So I'm gonna put in the call again, it's a training company. And we'll say this is a, we'll go with a discharge event. We'll call her name, we'll say Steve. Call her, we'll go with, Nursing home. Callback phone number. This was recently added. So we can put that in. Up 
update our date of service to today. Looks like this is open from before. That's fine. Is automatic okay, number one. on the phone number, correct? Sorry, what was that? Automatically putting the hyphens in on the phone number so we don't have to worry about that, correct? Yeah, so um, oh, number lock is off. That's the problem. So yeah, uh, as you know, I just typed the number in, and again, so we can see how this works. Just type it in, I tab away or click away, the system will automatically add the hyphens for me. If you enter fewer or greater than uh, the 10 numbers, is it gonna alert you? Nope, it just won't convert it because it doesn't find it as 10 keys, 10 numbers. Okay. If it's got the full 10, then it'll add the hyphens. If it doesn't, it'll just put the number in. Gotcha. All right, and we'll say our pickup time is going to be for 13.30. Sorry, new keyboard, getting used to it here. There we go, 1300. Pickup time, 13.30 appointment. Problem, it is discharge. Do we have one for discharge? Call time, apparently not. Uh, we'll say it was... Appointment time? Since this is a I'm discharge, sorry. they're just discharging from whatever facility it is. Could you make them both the same time? So here? Absolutely. Yep, it's fine. Okay. Yep. Cool. All right, again, we'll come then back to our priority. We'll say this one, we'll go with eh, scheduled transport for now is fine. Service level, BLS, fleet is training. I do have pickup notes, so this is where I can add any additional information uh, about this call. Um, in terms of the question that you asked, Michael, about information that might be good for, you might need for billing, this call out, so pickup notes is good. There's also another way we can add ad hoc notes to the ticket, and we'll just test this out. Uh, so you can see where this shows up in the claim, where the billers can then look for this stuff. We can talk to the billers about that too. Notes, uh, call Ma Maggie at the nursing home for the reference number. Okay. Patient, this time, let's see, we picked on the duck family last time, so this time we're going to pick on the mouse family. Oh, we already have Mickey. Look at you guys. Perfect. And since I have this matching patient here, if, remember, we talked about this before. If this is the patient I want, I need to make sure I select it, tell the system, use this existing record by double-clicking it in the matching patient window on the right. If I don't, I keep just typing things out. The system thinks that even if I put in the same date of birth, same social, whatever it happens to be, the system assumes it's a new patient record because otherwise I would have selected the corresponding one. So in this case, I do want to use this Mickey Mouse from 1940 and the system pulls in the information it has for that patient. Next, pickup. Um, again, as we talked about, if you know the code, you can type the code in. If you don't, you do have to go to the search. Uh, I know something that we're, the, the developers are looking on updating is doing a search from this resource field. Currently, though, the functionality of the system is such that you have to go ahead and open the search. And for us, again, like I said, I like picking Actually, we're coming from a hospital, right? Yep. And you guys have your... The resource oh. would be PWB. I'm sorry, was it? If you wanted to just do a resource, you could do STJWB. That's right. Perfect. And then going to... Taking him back to his nursing home. All about life. Okay. 
our information all set here. Things are looking good. I'm going to go ahead and, like we saw last time, save the call. When I do, because I picked the scheduled transport priority, the system wants to know, do I want to set up a return trip? I'm going to say no. So I can close it down. Just hit the X. Then want to get it assigned out, so I can again double click our run. System's going to show me the information about the call. Make this a little bit bigger again to see things a little easier. Hey Travis. Yep. If the return is will call and isn't scheduled, but it's going to occur, would you leave it at 2359 or would you actually put a number in there or how would that work? So that just depends on kind of an internal process. Either option, the system will work with just fine. Most places, we'll just put it in at 2359 just so it gets on the schedule for the day. So we know okay. it's there and when they're ready, we can just assign it. If you do like having a general time entered, I have a couple customers that do that, but most folks just stick with the 2359. Now, since we have a 12 hour lead time, this call is happening at 8 o'clock in the morning. We actually wouldn't end up seeing it until almost noon then, right? To populate that uh, return? Correct. So it wouldn't show up on the dashboard. However, if it's a call that's outside of that 12-hour window and you need to pick it up, uh, we'll go over how to find a call here in a bit. And then so you can always find the transport and you can tell the system on any transport that's not currently on the da dashboard to immediately stick it on the dashboard. Cool. Good question. Any other questions? Um, all right. Again, we see here since the system knows where 3050 was, at least the last time we used 3050, Hey, it's right there at the hospital, so it's zero miles away. It'll take them about a minute to get there. That's the one we want to sign to. So let's go ahead and double-click it here. Again, our service levels don't match. Yes, that's fine. We'll still assign this BLS run to that ALS unit. And our messaging won't send. That's okay. We don't want the crews to actually get this alert message right now. All right, so call is now alerted out. The system is sent the message, unit is at the alert service level. Now at this point, I'm going to one of those other questions like we talked about, I can add the pickup notes here for any billing information that'll go to just to this call. Also, if I want to add any ad hoc notes, which might be billing related as well, at any point, I can double click the unit. It opens up my workflow window and one of the options in the workflow window I'll always see about uh, two thirds of the way down is notes. So if I go into notes here, Double click it, little window opens up telling me I'm about to add notes for this specific transport. And here I can say, you know, um, bill facility direct for patient discharge. Click off or hit tab. The system sets that note for me and I can save it. Then I can close my note window down with the X up here or this X down here taking me back into my dashboard. At any point in time, if I again open up the workflow, go to notes, the system will show me the notes that have already been entered and I can add additional ones as I go along with this transport. Again, any information that's important to follow with this transport as it's used throughout the system, not just from the dispatch perspective, but maybe also for billing. Now, where those go, Remember last time we looked at a trip and we can always look at a trip by either right clicking the run, uh, sorry, the unit the run is assigned to or right clicking the run itself. If I've got the option to not hide transports, either way, I can go to edit run. Remember this is how we canceled a trip that was already in my dashboard but had not been assigned last time. It was one of the last things we talked about is I edited the run and I came here into my cancel reason and I selected that. Otherwise, other, the other pieces I have in here, just real quick to see, I can, in my dispatch tab, I have all the information, including callback number, destination number, phone numbers, the pickup notes that I added when I entered the call also show up here. Times, down at the bottom, we'll spend some more time with these times and odometers here in a minute with this example. But I also get the crew member. Now, in terms of just overall transport, I have several different tabs here within this record. 
Okay, so dispatch tab obviously corresponds to most of the stuff we were doing from a dispatch perspective for this transport. But this is the actual trip record itself in the system that is not only for the transport because, but because we have a dispatch and billing system, it's all the same system. This is the billing stuff too, and I can get a little idea of that. I get my detail tab. So pick up and destination, this is where the, that information goes. Diagnosis codes for those folks, that's great. Charges happens, payers, again, not necessarily pertaining to the dispatch side, but this is who would be billed out for this ticket, especially if it's an existing patient and we have payer information, it should show up here as well. But the really important thing for us is this notes tab. So again, here for everyone that uses the record and also any, again, those notes that we entered through the workflow will all show up on the notes tab for each individual transport. So if there's any important information you need to add to a trip while you're dispatching it out, make sure you open up the workflow, select the notes option, and you can put it right in so it's there for everybody to see. Are you able to delete notes if you put them on a wrong call accidentally or something? Nope. Notes are, <laughs> after they're entered, are read only, they are time stamped and user stamped. Okay, so we know who did them and when. If I did happen to put in the wrong note, disregard note entered at 7:24:18:624 p.m. I'm an idiot. <laughs> and it's there for all the world to see until I delete it later on the database because, ha, huh, I can't. <laughs> all right. But again, you know, so it's like when you, you go to text something to somebody and, you know, uh, autocorrect makes it a really interesting text. You know, same, same idea. You can't ever bring out text back, but you can try to correct your mistake. Okay, good question. Any other questions on working with a trip record itself, different places, you know, dispatch tab being a big thing, notes tab being a big thing, or adding notes to a transport from our workflow? I think that looks good. All right. Next thing, we have this call, 3050, and they've been in the alert status for about five minutes, and that's why it's blinking at us right now. It's like, hey, they should be in route at this point. And, you know, maybe it's at this alert status, maybe it's the in route status, yeah, maybe it just happens at some point. I don't know if this has ever happened to you folks, because I'm sure your crews are really good at communication. Um, unlike everybody else in the world. But have you ever been in a situation where you got a call, it's dispatched out to your unit, and the unit's been sitting at that status for, you know, five, 20, an hour and a half, and they never got back to you on anything? Right? Never happens, yeah. right? <laughs> never. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so we're going to assume 3050, you know, best intentions, they got busy, stuff happened, you know, I, it, it does happen. Um, but they're sitting here in the alert status for maybe instead of six minutes, 60 minutes, whatever it happens to be. And I find like, all right, pull up the radio, give them a call, say, hey, fellas, what's, what's going on with the transport from Mickey Mouse? And say, oh, yeah, we've been done with that. And we've been clear for 30 minutes. Whoops. Sorry. Yeah. Never happens, right? Well, if, you know, some way, shape, or form, out of the blue, it actually happens to you. Here's how to handle that situation within the system. So I have this call, it's in alert status, but in the real world, it's done. So now my times are off, the call should be completed, I need to make some changes, make some adjustments, but the first things first, I need to get this call cleared off this unit because maybe I have another call I need to get assigned to this unit. I got something else I need to do. So I can double click the unit to open up the workflow. When I do, I could just, you know, in route check, at scene, check, depart scene, check, just go through the entire process. Or regardless of where I am within the steps, there is this option here called complete fill. 
When I do complete fill, so I'm going to select that and process, the system will think for a second, and then it'll come up with this information on the screen to give me the stats about that call. Okay, and I get my actual times as they occurred here, and odometers, maybe if I got to that point, and any odometer information. Notice that all of my times, though, after that alert, they're all pretty much the same thing. So just kind of a review for me to give me information that I could then, you know, take down notes. I could, there's a printout that I could, you know, hit the print button, print it out, just have it so that they could then come back later and maybe fix those times for me, right? But what the system does, it goes through timestamps, all of those steps that have yet to be completed for right whenever I do complete fill, marks the call completed and the unit available so it could take another transport. So I'll now have this unit ready to go again. Great. Do they but, get a text message when that happens? They, yeah, so once it gets to part of the process of the depart scene is a text message when you're walking through the steps normally. However, the complete fill, the idea is just to get it done so a message won't go out. It kind of skips that portion of the workflow to just quickly mark everything completed. All right. So I had that run. It's not gone. I can't edit anymore, right? It's not in my runs grid. It's not on my unit anymore. But I need to fix it, right? I have this call that... The information within my system does not match the information for that call in the real world. So I need to find that call in the system. To do so, in my dispatching category, I have a button that looks like a magnifying glass on top of a unit, my runs button. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a runs search. When I do that, this run search tab opens up. The upper section are the search criteria the fields with which I can use to find the trip that I'm looking for. So here, well, I know the date of this trip was today's date, so I could put in 724. Here's a little tip for using the system. Anywhere in the system that there's a date field, if I put the letter T, that stands for today. So anytime I put in T in the system on a date field, the system assumes you mean today's date, so in that case, we'll use 724. I also remember the patient's last name was Mouse, not Mouise, hold on, Mouse. Can't really remember the wrong number. Maybe I remember the pickup location or the destination location, right? You know, pickup location, I could go ahead and find the hospital through the list or I can start typing it out by the name. That's fine. Maybe I know the service level, but one thing I do know for a fact, it was unit 3050 because those guys never radio in their times. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so I then hit search, and when I do, hit this little magnifying glass or enter twice on the keyboard, nothing comes up for me. I strike out, nada, it's blank, okay? Here's why. Something very, very important, a you know, couple little real keys to using my run search here. All of these different fields I can search from there's two very important check boxes right at the bottom, complete and canceled. Okay. There's three options when it comes to these check boxes. Blank, which right now complete is set to blank, dash, and then check mark. Which set that for complete right now. Those three different options are blank meaning not this thing. So initially when I did my search, I was telling the system actually, show me all the trips for today where the patient's last name was Mouse, the unit assigned was 3050, that had yet to be completed. They were not done transporting yet. Well, that call we did the complete fill with was completed. That's why we get zero results. Okay. Dash means either or. So technically what I'm telling the system here actually is show me every trip from today where the patient's last name is Mouse. For unit 3050, if I search again, it's where it's completed, whether or not it's been canceled. Then I hit search and I get my one for Mickey. Okay. And then blank obviously means not that thing. So initially we were saying, don't show me ones that are, com are completed. So now putting that check mark in for complete, I now get my trip I was looking for for Mickey Mouse. 
Any questions on my search criteria and the run search or the importance of these two check boxes at the bottom? So now I want to edit this call, so I'm going to double click that run in the list. And when I do so, I open that trip back up again. Since the last place I was looking on any trip record was a notes tab, the system automatically opens me up into the notes tab. Great, but that's not where my times are. Remember, we already saw the times are located at the bottom of the dispatch tab. So I'm going to my dispatch tab. And here, let's go back to the left. Again, I have all those fields that we saw initially. But I'm going to come down here, and I can see now those times for the different statuses. I can see what they are in terms of the status as it was. I can see when it was logged, meaning when it happened in the system. And I can see actual, meaning when it occurred in the real world. Let me make this a little bit bigger here. Logged is an un editable field. I cannot make any changes to these log fields because that is the timestamp. That's when the system says this happened in dispatch. Okay. Actual though, those are the times that I can edit. These are the times where they actually happened in the real world. Okay. So you know our alert was 1245. Well maybe our en route though was pretty soon right after that. We'll say 1246, right? That's when, and then when I make that change, as soon as I move away from the field, my reason field becomes highlighted, okay? Because I now have made a change to what the original time was, the original actual time, the system's forced me to say why. Why am I doing that? So I have to pick from my what's called discrepancy reasons. And these are the choices that I have, call volume, crew error, dispatch error, equipment failure, other traffic, unable to locate, vehicle failure, and weather. Okay. So again, why are my actual times here different than the log times? Now, And for this one, obviously, crew error. And then comment is where I can add additional free form text information about that reason. Um, Jimmy swallowed the radio again. <laughs> All right. So now I need to fix my at scene time. That was 1249. Okay. Again, it's an every time I change it. Because the system, these are individual fields, it needs to know why. Now, I can, you know, copy, paste the comment. I, you know, had the comment once, and I don't want to do it again. That's fine. But I always, if I make a change to the actual, I have to give it a reason. I have to put a parameter for, like, 911 call or something as a discrepancy reason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was Jimmy. Jimmy cracked corn and Come on. ate the radio. So I'll say 12.53 there. Yep, good. And... Sorry. Down the dot destination was fine, okay. but the available was off again. Down there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So my times are now fixed. Yay. However, over on the right-hand side, I'm still missing my odometers, right? Because when we did the complete fill, we did that at the alert step, so we never got to the opportunity to enter that odometer information at the depart scene and at destination steps. So I need to add odometer information. So to add an odometer, there's this big circle with a plus sign. Same idea as if there's ever a reason I need to add a time. Right? Maybe it didn't, I didn't get it, or there was a secondary time, something needs to be done. I can hit the same little circle button here for times and add a time. Okay, for us, though, right now, it's odometers. So I hit this little plus sign. System comes up. Let me get a little bigger so it's easier to see. Asking me, okay, here's the run number, here's the unit that was on that run. What unit status am I adding this odometer information for? Well, this is the depart scene step. So I can scroll down to find my depart scene. And choir okay. if it's zero. Um at destination of the total mileage that they get off of their trip meter. No. It's not because you guys do zero. However, 
Let me cancel this out. In terms of when it comes to billing, the system corresponds the depart scene odometer to the start odometer and the at destination odometer to the end odometer, which then the system will take this, these two numbers, subtract end odometer from start odometer, actually no, sorry, start odometer from end odometer to determine what the mileage quantity should be. So if you're just, again, if you're doing zeros, notice it already starts at zeros when we, these things never got put in through yep. dispatch. So you can, if you want, leave the depart scene. That only comes, it won't show up in the list here. If I, if I only do at destination, and we'll say in ticket odometer top, Ticket odometer type means which one of those start or end does this status odometer correspond to? We'll say end. And we'll say 4.6, right? And then I hit save here. So that will put in, or again, leaves the window up for now, but it'll put in that end odometer. So it won't ever have a start, I only have one entry at the at destination here. I'll never get the depart scene. And if that's fine, right. if you don't, the system doesn't care, okay? So it's a zero anyway. That's kind of up to you. If you want to see one for the depart scene and the at destination, then you still have to add one here for depart scene. So the answer ends up being no, we don't actually have to put in the zero. It automatically generates that. So it'll automatically generate it, and let me, so I add my two, close, save here. So again, it already automatically generates it for the start odometer and end odometer. Let me refresh here. There we go. Um, but if I want to see a separate entry for depart scene, I'd have to add a depart scene one. Otherwise, if you're finally just having the add destination, that's all right too. Okay. I didn't see it there in the uh, run search. Did, the, did you see the 4.6 as having showed up in the billing? Me uh, in the in the run search. There's no odometer section in the run search. But I'm not sure where you were at. Uh, maybe it was a different spot in the trip ticket. Oh, uh, here in detail. Oh, there it is. Okay, I didn't see it in there before. I'll say one other thing you do only, and maybe you're not sure, you know, it, it, here's something you can do. If they don't even give it to you or you're not sure, you can something, you know, show your billers. If you zero both these out, do that real quick and save it. Then I have this little button here called get mileage. So my 4.6 guess was way off. So what get mileage does is it plugs the starting address into Google Maps and the ending address into Google Maps and says, Google Maps, what is the driving distance? And this is what comes back. There's a button. <laughs> I feel like get abused. Why? Will the information EHR flow in the billing if we do not do any mileage and dispatch? So, yeah, if you leave, if you zero those out, when the system imports in from EHR, if there's no information here, it will override with whatever is in EHR. If there is information that you put in from dispatch, that information stays. The, the, what was entered via dispatch takes precedent, precedent over EHR. If nothing was entered in via dispatch, then the EHR information gets, gets imported in. Any other questions? Uh, not on this. Thanks, Travis. All right. Great. Yeah, I'll save. Cool. Okay. Any questions on using the run search? No? All right. Next thing. So. Now we're going to take another call, and our call type will be medical transport in a facility. Uh, we'll say caller. I know uh, I pick on a lot of nursing homes, but 
kind of covers a lot of bases here. Again, callback phone. Date fills in for today's date. Pickup time is going to be 1400 for a 1415 appointment. Problem. We'll say to Alice's, we'll go with scheduled transport, service level basic, fleet training, and we'll pick this time on. Oh, Sam Yosemite. 4-15-19-36. Uh, information great. We'll I pick a who we're gonna pick on this time. Let's go. Bridges group home. Oh, what are the that? since this is a dialysis transport, what are they classified under under resource type? Dialysis facility, usually those come under locations. So let's go ahead, we'll say destination. We'll clear this since that's the last thing we're looking for. Uh, what do we got here? So Aurora, which which one of these do you guys usually go to? Davida? If we go to Davida. Sure. So that is a J modifier. We can see the resource type here is just standard location. Okay. Just general. Yep. And so if I wanted to find specifically those locations, it'd be this. Okay, because they're in the EHR and dialysis. No. So these resource types are uneditable. If you want to further categorize besides those types, your different resources, you can create custom resource groups and associate them. So if you want a dialysis resource group, you can create that. That's one of those tables uh, in table maintenance, like in Matthew. Sure. And then you can assign all of these as part of the dialysis resource group, at which point you could then hit this drop down and hit dialysis and see all of those associated resources. You don't have to get that particular though. If I just want to look up a facility under last name, I can just start typing. Peter just like I did, yeah. yeah. I, I did DIA and it showed me all the ones that had DIA in the name. Okay. Yep. Cool. I think that's pretty easy. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. Again, since we picked a scheduled transport, the system comes up and says, all right, do you want to set up a return trip? I'm going to say, we saw the you new, know, again. last time, uh, we saw that, yeah, we hit the check mark here, the system creates the return, and on these Dallas trips, my guess is you probably are going to go out and back, that's how most folks do it, but for now, maybe we'll say, you know, um, Yosemite called, and while he needs a trip there, his wife's taking him back home, so he does not need a return trip, so I can close this out, and I only have his outbound at this point. Now, let's go ahead and as, let's get this assigned out. We'll put this on 503 because they haven't done anything at all in our training. So we'll get them busy. And yes, that's okay. We know it's a BLS call on ALS paramedic unit. And it's not sending the message. Perfectly fine. So they're alerted. We'll send them to be alerted. They are in route. They're not just in route, they are at scene. I know they're, again, like we talked about, efficient, not speeding, efficient. And finally, I wanna get them to the part scene steps so we can see some things that can happen here. All right, so, and again, odometer is zero. All right, so 503, they got Yosemite. They're driving down the road, taking them to the Alpha Center. And all of a sudden, the squirrel runs out in front of the unit, the unit swerves, hits a pothole, pops a tire, the unit is down, all right? So 503 has broken down. They got a flat tire. There's a problem. They can no longer complete this transport, okay? So a couple things we need to do. First of all, <laughs> what was that? Inside joke with the company. Oh, gotcha. 
So is it 503 that's always doing that? All right, so I need to put 503 out of service. They're still on duty, but they've got a problem. So I'm going to double-click and open them up. And I'm going to choose out of service here. Now, one thing I do want to point out, okay, when I go out of service, the system's going to automatically, let's see it here, ask me, come up with this window that pops up and says, hey, you're taking 503 out of service. What's the problem? And so I have this list of choices. We'll say mechanical problems. We'll say hit a pothole. Popped a tire. When I do that, notice, first of all, 503 goes out of service, okay? And it's orange, so it's still on duty, but they cannot take transports right now. And this gives me that visual representation. At the same time, because I told the system that Unit 503 is going out of service, when Unit 503 had a run already assigned to it, Notice that run now is no longer associated with the unit. It's no longer being transported okay? because we need somebody else to pick up Yosemite and take him over to his dialysis appointment since 503 is broken down. So if we scheduled maintenance appointments, it would kick him off as soon as we put him out of service for it. Mm -hmm. if, that, if that unit had a run assigned to it, yes. So, yeah, if we did a maintenance assignment as a run, it would kick it off and show it as needing to be assigned. Oh, that's true. You so that kind of service. Yeah, you wouldn't. You just wouldn't put it out of service. You would just have it as a. In that case, I might have a different priority for those calls. So they show up as a different color, different scheme, different time, and you can just run them through and leave them at, at their, you know, at scene for however long it happens to be. Now, we need to get this run, though, assigned to somebody else so Yosemite can get to his dialysis appointment. So, again, I'll open it up. Well, at this point, there's only one unit currently available. They're 21 miles away. It's going to take about 27 minutes to get there. So be it. They're the ones that are going to take it. So we will assign this to 3050. Again, we get the information about service level mismatch. That's fine. No message goes out. That's okay. They're alerted. They are in route. Okay. So, had 503. They ran into a problem. They were already assigned to run. Put them out of service. The system marks them as orange. Can't assign them runs right now, but it takes the run they were assigned, drops it back into my unassigned transport so I can get it out to somebody else. All right, any questions there? No? All right. Another thing I want to point out from my workflow, we won't do this here, but... Oh, go ahead. So if that scenario played out, it could go in one of two ways. 3050 comes to 503, and since 503's crew has had patient care, they would transfer the patient into 3050 with the 503 crew. Or if it's no big deal, there's a smaller chance that 3050 would just assume patient care. So if we need to switch the crew members assigned to this unit for this transport. Remember, we can open up the workflow and do the change resources option. Does that change it for who's assigned to it for all or just for that one? All. This changes it until we change it back. What is that shift change on there? That's it's just the, the name of the window. Is it called, it's called change shift request. So when it change resources, it's basically saying who's going to, you know, shows okay. me who's on the unit and allows me to adjust who's on the unit on the shift moving forward until I can maybe change it again if I need to. Remember, ones in blue are the folks that are currently on the unit. Ones in that are grayed out, let's see if we can, there's the other blue one. Ones that are grayed out are folks on other units currently. 
So if we wanted to switch them onto that replacement unit, we would have to take them off ship on the one that broke down so they become available? So let's say I want to, well, the crew who's currently on 3050 in, in this example and in, in your guys, how you guys ran into it, would the 3050 crew move off of 3050 and onto 503 or would they continue with the folks from 503 and stay on 3050 as well? Uh, it could differ, but it would probably be that they would move. So it would basically swap squads. So I would take Joseph off. And Lindsay off. I'd put Deborah on and Teresa on. Hang <laughs> on. Now, as soon as I do that, find the other end on. I wonder why they were saying that that they were showing up gray as assigned to a resource. Because we I used Lindsay you. Carlisle and Joe Bosch, and then the other ambulance was Tyler and Frank. yeah Frank and Tyler. Probably because I'm only looking at the training fleet, and you guys have those folks on units maybe from a different fleet. Oh yeah, it could be people in there and. Yep. Deb is not on any unless they've been playing with it. Sure, just looking. Okay. Yeah, so it's cold. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> and then on this unit, well, let's. I would again do change resources. Yeah. And it, might be one of and it would be Joe and Lindsay, and we'll take. Tank and who's the other one? Mark two, Mark Walden. Or Frank. And maybe I'll put Tank and her Frank on this one so they on accordingly. I'm on a call or I'm on a truck apparently too. So that would make okay. sense. Oh, because I didn't work yesterday. All right. So, what else? One thing also to point out when we did put 503, like we talked about, into out of service, the system automatically put the call back unassigned for me. If I ever have a call that is on one unit that that unit can't take that call or that unit is needed for a higher level of service call and I want to take the call that's already assigned to it and put it at back on a different unit. So essentially there's not a problem with the unit but I need to get the call unassigned from it that's currently on it. I can always double click the unit. Open up my workflow. In the workflow one of the options is reassign run. So reassign run is the same thing as taking basically the out of service of the unassigning the call from that unit, but still leaving the unit now available for a different call. Oh, okay. All right, so if I did this, it takes that call, unassigns it again, and makes 3050 available. I'll put it back here, though. Any questions there so far? No, we went through a lot, but just want to make sure everybody's feeling comfortable. I think it's right. made. Made sense? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so we'll say 3050, they're alerted to you need to get Yosemite. I'll process that so they're en route. We'll even say at scene. 
And now we're departing scene. Okay. Getting odometer zero. As they're departing the scene, they're having a little chat with Yosemite. Turns out Yosemite, his, he and his wife are in a little bit of a lover spat. So she's, she does not want to have anything to do with him currently. So she will not be picking him up from his dialysis appointment. He will now need a trip back. Okay, so remember when we first put this call in, system asked us, do we want to do a round trip? We said no. Turns out now we do want to have a round trip for this existing call. Okay. Well, as long as I still have the call on a unit or at least the call in my dashboard, I can right click either one, opens up that little menu we saw last time, and in this one there's the option of schedule a return run. If I hit that, voila, it brings that return run window back up for me so I can just say, yep, we do want it in this case. Code one non-emergent is fine. Process the step. And now we have his return trip in the system as well. Okay. Cool. All right, so again there, had a call. Didn't set up a return initially. Do want a return. So I right click it and say schedule a return trip. And we'll go ahead and finish this transport at destination. And then they got them off to the Dallas facility and they are done. All right. 503 on the other hand, they're back and ready to roll. They fixed their tire. So I'm going to double click 503 to again open their workflow and I'm going to set them as available. There's a return trip and they don't get the return trip because instead we're taking to return them, we're taking them to the hospital. You can do a change destination when you double click. Yeah. Sorry, what was the question? So the question was, let's say that we go to return the patient and it turns out that they're sick and actually need to go to the hospital. And I said you would assign and do a change destination. Would that be accurate? That would be accurate. So let's go ahead. We'll stick them on 503 this time since they're working again. Alert and route. That scene, and so, you know, yeah, we pick up Yosemite, we're departing the scene. As we're transporting Yosemite, he starts, you know, getting very ill and dizzy, maybe passes out, whatever it is. Obviously, we're having an issue here. So I'm going to, instead of taking him back to his nursing facility or if he's taking him back to his house, wherever it is we're taking him, I'm going to say change destination. And it comes up and says, all right, where are you taking them? St. John's. And save. And now we're still in the depart scene process, but if we come over, we can see our next stop is the hospital. If we continue on, we can see where the destination itself has changed. It definitely not, that's not quite what I meant, but sort of, what if, how many times we get called for somebody who's supposed to have a return trip, but we're called two hours early because they're bleeding out, or, you know, their blood pressure. Well, you do the same thing. It's just the same thing. You just, yeah. you just up the time of the return transport. Yeah, and let the again put a note in. You can change a priority too, correct? That's what I was going to say. Double click. Correct. So yeah, if I go back here, and choose change priority, then I get the drop down, and I can say this one's you know now code two emergent, and I can even add a note, which again will then fill into that notes tab on the trip record itself. Right. 
add that note, save. And I can even see the call itself in my grid has now changed to match the appropriate priority. Now, let's put all this fun stuff together. Let's finish this call. At destination. And then we'll mark it complete. So does this send a message every single time the crew hits the time on it? No, just when they're at destination okay. or when the call okay. is assigned. That's what I want to make sure. That's See it. Yep, just when it goes to the alert status and then goes to the at destination status. Not, be, not based off time, just off those two statuses themselves. And the alert he keeps clearing is because they turn the messaging off yeah, when right, they, so you that. don't get weird messages like you guys did for Donald Duck the other day. Oh, yeah, Wendy, were you in the truck when you were going to work on this? Yeah. yeah. We, to DM <laughs> <laughs> we were just playing. <laughs> All right. So here, so let's go with this then. All right. So we'll say caller is family. And let's say pickup time is I'm scheduled to pick them up at eight o'clock tonight. Because he's coming home from a doctor's appointment or whoever, whatever it happens to be, and he had a cardiac issue. We're doing a scheduled transport service level. We'll say A less intermediate fleet training. And we'll pick on Donald again. Since that patient is already in existence, I will double click it in my matching patients list. And we're going to pick up, let's say, from a physician. Healthcare Germantown, and we're supposed to take him back to his house. So since it's just an address, I can type that in: five 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 Maple Lane. And West Bend. There. Okay. Save that. Nope. It's just a discharge, so we don't want to return. So I now have this call. It's scheduled for 8 o'clock at night. Yay, fantastic. Okay. Next, as he's waiting for the discharge, from the, or waiting at the doctor's office, or whatever it happens to be for he finishes his test, we get a call that says, hey, he's going to cardiac arrest. We need to get him over to the hospital. So I can immediately assign this out. Say 3050. And just like we saw, I can come back in and I can change my destination and then come back in and change my priority. Or if I want to do all that at once, I can right click the unit and maybe we'll say they radio back there and route, probably more likely. I can then edit that run which again opens up the trip record for me. On my dispatch tab, I can change my priority right here to emergent. Detail tab, I can come into my destination. This is a code, just like on our call screens, the top box is always a code, and if I know the code, I can type it in. Otherwise, just like all my call screens, I have the search button. I could search for whatever I needed to do as well. I then save the call record itself, which would then, again, update all the information here on the call on my runs grid and on my units grid.
So again, that situation happens. I get it assigned out right away. I can use my workflows to just change the destination and then open up the workflow again and change priority. Or if I want to do both at the same time, I could edit the run, right click either run or the unit, edit run, and then update the priority on the dispatch tab and the destination on the detail tab. Good question, good example. Any, any questions on how to handle that? No? All right. Perfect. And let's go ahead and finish this off real quick. Let's see. All right. Next thing to look at real quick. So this unit 3050, they're at seeing they're going to St. Joe's. They're on their way. See, I'm gonna stick with training company. Call type. We're now gonna do another discharge. A caller is nursing home again. Over the callback number, we'll say the pickup time is 1440. It's a discharge, so we'll just match up the appointment time. Problem was back pain. <laughs> Priority scheduled, service level, basic life support, fleet training. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about stacking calls and how the system handles stacking calls. So what's going to happen is we're going to have this call come in. The pickup's going to be St. Joe's. We're going to go to a nursing home. Well, since 3050 is already on their way to St. Joe's with Donald, we'll just have them pick up this patient after they're done dropping Donald off. So we'll say duck. It's a, it's a fine duck day. It's Daffy. Pick up St. Joe's. Destination will do. So our city will also be West Bend. Um, so again, I can search by multiple options, and this time I want West Bend Nursing Home. And so now it's giving me just the West Bend Nursing Homes. We'll go Cedar Bay West. Okay. Save the call. Again, it is a discharge, so no return. And I want this assigned to 3050. So I can either click and drag it or double click it just like before. Again, when I open up that alert unit window, the system initially is showing me the available units. 3050 is not there because 3050 is transporting, but it still is under unavailable units. I can still assign it here. So if I double click that, the system says, okay, it's an ALS unit, BLS run, you sure? Yep. Then it says, okay, 3050, you're trying to assign it to this unit that already is active on another transport. Are you sure you want to add this run to the unit's queue? Meaning it backs them up. It creates a list of runs that are going to be assigned to it. And I say yes. So it still is at scene with the call for Daffy. All right. I'm oh, sorry, Donald. But Daffy has been assigned as well. I can see in my runs grid, 3050 is a unit on both calls. If I want to see how many runs or information about the runs that are currently queued, currently stacked on this unit, I can right click that unit and I can say runs in queue. And it shows me right now there's one run in the queue. Here's its number. Here's the patient and the pickup information. Now, as it completes the call for Donald, so we'll say they're departing the scene. Because we picked an emergency priority, right? We picked emergency two because Donald was you know, bleeding out and needed to go to the hospital instead of just his whatever discharge back to his house. System asked me the additional questions because of it being the emergency transport. So we're just taking the one patient. Nobody refused. Nobody was DOA. 
we're restarting our odometer at zero. It's a cardiac problem and land transport. Great. And uh, yep, I'll fix those on the back end. And it's departing the scene. What were those error messages? So the system when you are saying you have zeros, it basically it, it, if it need if it thinks it might need a reason for being a patient canceling for being a DOA or refusing transport, it, need, it needs those DOA and AMA cancel reasons available in the cancel reasons table. And I think you guys either removed those or, or deleted that or, or marked them inactive. I can just reestablish them, but they have to be there. Otherwise, yeah, you get that little warning saying there's no DOA reason. I think that's because that isn't a reason to cancel for us because we still have them completed. Uh, run form on that, or an EHR. So that, so that doesn't mean that you can't complete a run form or, or, or an EHR. It just means that in dispatch, it's it's a cancel reason in the dispatch, but there's still an EHR form for it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And that's fine. Like I said, I can I can fix that in the back end. No big deal. All right. So we'll say at destination, 5.6. And then we will complete the call. Once we complete the call for Donald, it clears from our grid. It clears from unit 3050, but immediately 3050, so they're just going to the available status, moves right to the alert status for the call for Daffy. When does the message get sent to their phone with their call information? As soon as the unit goes to an alert status. Which you're actually in control of, correct? As the dispatcher, when you have them queued, the the system, as soon as you mark the prior trip completed, will immediately assign the next call, moving it into alert status. So, in terms of controlling, yes, you can control it by not marking the prior call complete until you're ready for it to be alerted. Uh, that's good to know. I just I'd rather catch them still at the facility than in the ambulance calling me on the radio, pulling out of the bay. And right. then going, nope, you got to loop back and go back inside. Right. Any, question. uh, any other questions there? They still sometimes end up looping back and going back inside because they act like they didn't <laughs> message and hope you send someone else. Even well, I can't help you with that. I mean, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> you know, there's maybe a remote shock system eventually, but for the time being. Collars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Invisible fence. All right. And we'll say, yep, they are en route because they're right there. In fact, they're just already at the scene. So you can leave that as is. All right. Cool. Any questions on stacking calls? That is kind of right. nice that it automatically goes right from one end to the next. Correct. Makes it makes it a little easier that way, yeah. <laughs> All right. Next thing. Let's just, I still have it open here. Nope. All right, let's talk a little bit. We're going to go back to our emergency call screen because if been playing with a non-emergency call screen all day and let's remind ourselves what the emergency one looks like it is a little bit different one column less fields and we're going to say the caller is a bystander our problem is an accident service level we'll say BLS paramedic notes auto Accident. <laughs> Let's say, because I know you guys get your 911 calls from the county, right? And we talked a little about this last time. Let's say we don't have a whole lot of information here. And you don't necessarily need it, right, to create the call. Everything that we need is kind of defaulted in. So I'm going to just save this. Don't have patient information, don't have pickup information. Oh, I bet it was from the other day. 
and I set that for the training fleet. Oh, nope, I set it for the default fleet. There it is. Let me fix this one here real quick. Make it back to the training fleet. There we go. All right. So I got this emergency call. It needs to be dispatched out. 503 is available. Let's go and get this to 503. We'll say they are in route. At this point, we don't have any information about where they're in route to. Don't need it. All right. If they're getting it from the county, they get it from another location, they know where they're going. If they're feeding you that information, great. We can always all right, edit the run. And on the detail tab, we can add address information. To add address information when you're in a trip record like this, you have to hit this pencil button. Hitting the pencil button opens up the address window. You could type in, you know, 123 Main Street. Voila. So I can now add it after if I've gotten that information. If I haven't, I can absolutely walk through the entire trip without ever putting that information in. Okay? It's not required for actually transporting the trip. If I never get that information, well, that's something I could then add later on, right? Find the trip in my run search and edit it that way. Okay, in the same steps. But for now, we'll pretend we, the crew called us back or we got information from the county about where we're going. Maybe we don't have any patient information yet, but we got about it where we're going. And we'll save that. Close this down. And we'll say they are now en route. We'll say they are at scene. And and when they get at scene, they're finding out some additional information. You know, again, it was an auto accident. Maybe, you know, multiple patients need to be transported. That's fine. They're getting this information. Maybe they are getting us the information back um, that we can fill into the system about who the main patient is. Maybe they're not. Okay. That's okay, too. Again, System-wise, whatever you have, as long as those default fields are filled out, which they already are set on those emergency calls for us when we create the calls, if you don't have it, you don't need it. As long as the defaults are there, the system, it's okay with it. For us, though, we'll say, all right, let's go ahead. We're departing the scene. We'll say they are going to go to St. John's. Did that automatically populate the odometer? It populates it based off the last entry. So the last time I put in a, an entry for this unit, it was 8.2. Ah, uh, okay. Did I, no, hold on a second, hold on a second. What did I set this? Oh, okay. <laughs> hold on. Like, that's not right because it's not an emergency. Yeah, it is an emergency. Hold on. So again, I did that on purpose to show you, you can put non-emergency calls in an emergency call screen. Huh, right, right, you believe me. All right, so let's change this priority. Now let's try that again. All right, so we're departing the scene. Yeah, it looks better. All right, uh, yeah, here, it's because it didn't take it initially. This would not a great example if I had done it correctly. Hold on, we'll try this again. All right, so we're going to take an emergency call. It's going to be a uh, let's see, call type, and we'll go with call type default. But here we'll pick emergent. That's better. And here we'll say training. 
and everything else will just leave. All right, we'll put this on 503. And we might not get any other information for a good long while, and that's fine. So they're alert, they're in route, they are at scene, and now they are departing the scene. Again, need to know where we're going. Oh, helps if I put the whole code in. There we go. And now, because it was put in as an emergency call, we now need to know how many we're transporting. Well, it was a you know, multi-vehicle accident. We're taking three patients. Okay. We'll say one refused, so they are good, and nobody was DOA, and our problem was accident. And we'll accept. So I st oh, good. For our 911 calls, since the crews are getting all their information and talking to the county, they don't even really talk to our dispatch, um, except to tell them that they're going on a 911 call and that they're clear. Would it be best temporarily, at least, to get them on and off the call to generate the call, end up at the end when they say that they're clear, um, it's a, a complete fill tab and then go back through and put the actual times in that the county gives them. Our crews get those call times from the county. That way it, it correlates with what their times are. So yeah, that would be, again, if you're not getting any information from them, Enter the call. You can just leave it in as the in route status, just like we did that. Yeah, I covered that one that we did earlier. And then when you they radio back in that they're done, you can complete fill, and then add any information that they're giving you in that from the run. You know, find it in the run search, add it that way. I feel like we need to leave it up there until we've completely entered everything, so that we have that as a memory, so that we know that we have to add that information. That oh, still, yeah. Well, I guess yeah, you have to get it off the vehicle. The one thing you can always do, you can edit run and you can just leave the run record open. Oh, there you go. There you don't have to close this tab down. I can come back to my dashboard and still leave that, that yeah. trip open for editing. Because that's one of the things we're going to talk about is how we're going to handle getting call information for the 911 calls going forward. Good question. That that makes sense then? Yes. I think you had a, a good idea of how to handle it. All right, great. And for now, we just don't need this one right now, so we will close that down. All right, and we will now say they're at destination. Now, once they get to the at destination, because we told them the system that we're taking multiple patients, it wants to know any additional information about those patients that we have. If we, if there are patients that already exist in the system, I could do a search. You know, last name is always a Smith, and I could find that person and assign them here. If it's a brand new patient, I could always just type that information in. Okay. If there's no patient information I have, I can just you know, keep accepting. And then again, no message goes out right now. <laughs> and then they are completed. All right, so again, that example was an emergency. We took multiple patients. Because we took multiple patients, things did change a little bit for us at the very end. It wanted to know information about any of the patients that we had. We didn't, right, because it sounds like you guys won't be getting that very often. I mean, if you did, you always put it in. But if you don't, you don't have to put anything and just check right through. All right. Any questions on call emergency calls with multiple patients, at least running them through the dispatch? How does that correlate to the multiple run numbers that they get for having to write different reports for different patients? So that was one of my... 
about that colon one, colon two on the run mm -hmm. report? Multiple patients, one incident? Exactly. So that's a great question. And so, yeah, now let's see how the system handles that. In terms of what it sends to EHR, it's got the main record on EHR, and they will put multiple patients on on the EHR side, which they're probably already doing with the information that they're getting on there, and they're just not giving it to us, right? Now, in the dispatch system, what does that look like? Well, I'm going to come back to my run search. In my run search, I was already looking for trips for today from last name mouse that were completed for unit 3050. That's no longer what I'm looking for. So try and delete all these things out and making changes. I'm just going to hit this X over on my run search, the clear run search button here. When I do, it resets all of the fields. So again, I'm looking for trips from today. I'm looking trips that were priority code to emergent that were assigned to unit 503. And it's done, so let's make sure we're looking for completed ones. So units aren't going to be getting run numbers from like, oh no, whatever, like when we're not getting them now, it's going to generate run numbers and then it syncs it with the EHR. Right, so the way it works is when you create a run in dispatch and assign it to a unit, that unit in EHR has a button on their, their EHR uh, device on the, the, the application called CAD import. They hit that CAD import button, it shows them all the trips that have been assigned to them from dispatch. So they can pick from those, in this case in emergency ones, you just put one in right away, you save it they hit that CAD import button, they select it, and they're starting to fill in all the information on their side about that emergency transport. You obviously don't have it here until later on. Now, once we've done that, we get our results, and I can see here, I have this one incident, the emergency incident we just did, with multiple patients, four. Why four? Well, we took three and one refused. So even the refusal, though, gets marked as a transport. It's marked as an actual run. It was just a refusal. At this point, I go in and fill the information in. I was already just, you know, open any of these up and start adding the patient information, pick up information since I didn't have that to begin with, so on and so forth. I can add the patient here. I think we had... What's your zip code there? Nine five something zero three. Five three zero nine five. Five three. There we go. And then again, with whatever information I'm getting, I can fill out the times appropriately updating them if I did that complete fill option oh so we would have to the reason thing because that's gonna every single 911 call you're gonna have to add a reason every single time you change the time on that that's why I asked that original question when we <clears throat> were looking at this program Either I assumed or we thought that there was a two-way data transfer. What is the prospect or prospects of this talking better between EHR and dispatch so that we don't have all this manual entry? Because we're going to be, you know, 3,500 911 calls. We're going to have to be entering all this stuff in. <sighs> From my understanding, I don't I don't know what the because again it's two separate databases, two separate systems, and in terms of how the the connection piece between 
dispatch and EHR works. It's a um, that that piece is uh, dispatch agnostic, meaning that works with our dispatch or anybody's dispatch. And because the way that's designed to work with multiple dispatches, getting it to be a two way is very hard because you're working with multiple systems at that point. Well, just like the ESO EHR has the upload CAD, could it go the other way and you have an upload CAD option from the ESO EHR system to the dispatch? As possible, but I, I'm not aware of any development towards that process currently. I, mean, I just feel like I know this isn't Travis's problem, but you know, we're not a very big company. If we were doing 50 or 100,000 runs a year, like if we were a Milwaukee company, it wouldn't, I mean, we'd be doing 50,000 911 calls a year that we have to manually enter all this stuff in. I mean, we will, we will see efficiencies of getting off of paper, but it also creates some pretty big inefficiencies having to enter all of this stuff is, you know, it's hugely cumbersome for us. Let's see. I think how we can make things a little, um, being able to describe reason would be nice. If it fell under, you know, like a certain, you know, response priority or. So let's say. I'm going to make a quick change here. Obviously, you're going to want a 911 discrepancy reason, correct? Yes. So currently, so you're already going to have to come in and make these changes. And let's see, we can change the date there. Times you'll have to just update. Um, if you're working from an EHR record, you can't copy and paste that stuff in. Uh, otherwise, you know. So this is always going to be adding that field. But here, if you just tab to the reason, right now, yes, reason is required. But if I just type in one key, I can tab on through. I don't have to go to the drop down. If I know which one I'm doing, I can just select it. You can just hit nine, tab, tab, nine, tab, tab, nine, tab, tab. Yeah, exactly. That's a little better. So, you know, here, 54, here, 55, and then it's nine, and it's done. I can go to the next one. I could, you know, yeah. and, and I, if you're a keyboard person like I am, you can kind of just keep tabbing all the way through. That search stuff that you hit on earlier and you were going to pass on development, that's one of those reasons about not having to go to that. I mean, just making the search easier, you're not taking your hands off the keyboard as much. And, Right. That slows you down. Do we then rely on the EHR for the times? And you just get the time that it was dispatched and the time that cleared? The times in the center don't get filled in? Yeah, that's what I was saying by the that. fill all tab thing. That's like the shortcut to do that right now. Yeah. As far as their coding is. I have one more question about those 911 and emergency calls. Mm -hmm. So they get paged by the county, crowd in their ambulance. They start new run report. We realize that they're going out, so we start a dispatch record for that. 
how does that sync up with that dispatch record and their EHR that they started separate from this? So they can, the, the, the one they created in EHR, they will have to edit the run number to match up to what the run number that was dispatched to them from CAT. So if they start one and it's, you know, EHR, you know, uh, um, uh, LIF-123-EMI, dash dash whatever those are, then there's an edit run number button in EHR that they could then hit that edit run number button and type in the, you know, 18007017 and hit update and the system will find the one that was dispatched to them and sync them up. So that run and number then, that crew generated in EHR, does that just go lost or will, will that end up being used again? For no, that's the EHR one is just like what you're getting now that you have to change. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly the I just want to make thing. sure it wasn't going to like screw up stats and stuff, too, with that. No. no. The side of things were different reporting. So. <clears throat> uh, any other questions there? Oh. All right. This one down and come back here. Okay. Next things. So we have so far always been looking at a lot of calls for same day. We're just as they're coming in, we're entering them in, we're dispatching them out, all happening, you know, pretty much at the same time. Next thing we're taking a look at is putting in calls with future dates of service. Okay. So the big thing about putting calls in with future dates of service is you have to do it on a call screen that's got a data service field. So non-emergency call screen has a data service field. Emergency call screen does not. So if I have a call that needs to go in for tomorrow or next week or you know three weeks from now, emergency call screen, not a very good choice for it because it just puts it in right now. However, if it's you know coming up in a little bit, I can always just come in here, fill out my information, and we will go with in the facility. Here I can either update my date, all right, we'll say it's tomorrow, or I have this little calendar page, so I can hit the calendar button and pick a different date in the future. Let's say there, and then I can say what is the pickup time? Well, they're getting picked up at 0600 tomorrow for an 0700 appointment. It is for a dialysis. Tab too far. Priority will be code one, non-emergent, service level, basic, and fleet training. We'll pick on Mickey again. We're going to pick Mickey up from his house. Was there not an address in there for him? Because if you selected him as a patient, wouldn't his address default? So if, and we'll look here in a little bit how to make sure they have an address. If there's an address, I just put the little mag hit the magnifying glass next to that patient. It'll show me if an address has been associated with this patient record. There is not. So that it won't pull it in. If there was an address here and I wanted to use that home address, I could hit this little button right here and the system will pull that address from that patient record. Okay. But since his patient record does not have an associated address, nothing would have come over. If we want, let's go ahead and get rid of this. See what that 
works. So yeah, right now I hit this, nothing. But if I edit his patient record, so patient record's open here, I hit the little pencil button, system will think for a second, then it comes to the, con the, the patient record, I have the detail tab, information about the patient, his demographic information, I can update it here, you know, I know he's male, he's definitely married, I can make the changes as needed. I also have this contact tab over here, this is where I can add his patient address information, so maybe that's where I put in the 88 Washington Boulevard. Nope. Was it five three zero nine five? Correct. There you go. Now, once I have his address information in, I have different check boxes here. Default meaning home address. All right, where are we going to go to pick him up if it's you know not a facility? Right, if it's a facility, if it's a nursing home, if it's a hospital, obviously I will pick from one of my resources. But if he's not at one of those locations and he still needs to be picked up, this is where it would be. Okay. Also, I can say it's his mailing address. So any correspondence we're sending out to him, any letters, any invoices, any statements, anything from that billing side, I want to make sure it goes there. I could do the mailing address. If it's different addresses, I could always add a second address here, one for, you know, where he lives, one maybe for a P.O. box. Right? And I could set the check marks separately if he has multiple addresses. Let's say he's in a nursing home, like let rehab, but he still has a main address. Would that be, is that kind of what you're talking about? Right, so you'd want his, well, if that's the case, his main address is probably where you want to send his mail anyway, and that would still be his default address, right? Because the nursing home is a resource. So if I'm picking him up from the nursing home, I'm going to pick him up from the resource, not his home address. So technically, we wouldn't even put an address in for him at the time? If not, if he's in a nursing home, because he's, you know, I, I, here, pickup would be that nursing home. It wouldn't be his address. It's a, it's a, it's the resource. It's not his home. Can you look and see if there's any prison resources? Because we we have an entire city full of prisons that we serve, <laughs> and they that would be permanent address for the most part. Or can you put Dodge Correctional? If I could type it. <laughs> and the reason I'd want to do this, even if you have multiple patients there, could you put that address in as the patient's default address and then hit that button? You could, but then if I wanted to count how many times I picked up from Dodge Correctional, any of those ones where I use the patient default would not show up in that count because instead of picking the resource, I just picked an address that was marked as default. Gotcha. So that's why even if they're at this facility, I want to use the facility, I don't want to add that facility to their default address because that's if I'm trying to figure out how many times I went to the facility, their address is not associated with the facility. I need to yeah. pick the facility. All right, let's look at I. Good questions. Any others so far working with this patient record? So this would be the same place where if we wanted to add a note, patient record like that would be reoccurring so anytime we take a recurring trip for patient with the last name flowers we can put you know we'll know that use the back entrance or wants to be called jimmy or whatever it might be so i can't some patient records do have their own notes i can add information about the note yeah, in the notes section about this patient that pertains to this patient, not necessarily one of their trips. 
If I want to put something in for the patient that follows the patient wherever they go, I can put it in here and that this in the alert field on the detail tab and this follows that patient around. Feet are way too big for his body. Trips a ton. So then what will happen, so I'll say, did we make that? All right, so, cool. So what, I, what happens by putting that into the alert record, it's wherever I use this patient, notice that I, there's a little I now. In the alert, anything in there will show up in this little section. Also, let's do this. I'm going to totally get rid of this here since we just added that. And let's try this again. Now, since I put that alert in, also when I see the matching patient, it's going to show me anything in the alert section. And will yep. that go to the squad as well? That alert does not go to the squad. If I want information to go to the squad, if I want that same information to go, I can add it to the pickup notes. Good questions. All right, and so now since I have a default pickup address for him, I can hit this little button here, and the system will then go to that patient record, see if I added any address as a default address for the patient, and if so, pull that information in. And then here I can say we're headed to, uh, it was, It was DDLW, but we'll find out for sure here. Uh, DDMIL. So, so we're taking them to, to uh, our Davida. All right, so I have all my information in. Again, the big thing here, we we're trying to put in a call for tomorrow, so we made sure our date of service was tomorrow's date and I save the call. When I do so, the system will think for a second and creates the call for me. Now, did not ask me about a return, right, because we picked a code one non-emergent. I did not pick a scheduled transport, so that code one non-emergent does not ask me about return trips. So again, just kind of a little review on what the different priorities do, what they mean, and again, if we want a return trip, picking scheduled transport is important because that's going to prompt me for that. All right. When I do enter that call, I still have that trip they were doing earlier for Daffy. They're still at scene. Maybe we can move them along to their depart scene step, right? Because hey, dispatching is still going on. But my call for Mickey does not show up because we're outside of that 12-hour window. All right. His pickup time is 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. We're not at 6 o'clock tonight yet. So if I want to see what sort of trips I have coming up for tomorrow, well, again, that's where I have my run search. So instead of searching for calls for today that are code to emergent, that clear all this stuff out, I'm looking for trips that are for tomorrow. So again, I can put in tomorrow's date. Don't need the year. System always assumes the year we're in on a date field if you don't put the date in. And I can just, I want to see everything. So complete, canceled, or dashed, meaning either completed or not, or canceled or not. Maybe I just want to make sure I'm looking at ones that aren't done for tomorrow. Right. Oh, tomorrow's the 25th. I'm already jumping ahead to Thursday. All right, so there's my call now for Mickey. <coughs> I think we covered this last time um, for the balance of transports that happened 
like every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you put them in, but they only go, what, three weeks in advance? So for our recurring transports, we haven't covered those quite yet. We're, we're going to. Um, this is first just putting in one-off future trips. Okay, But we'll talk about recurring transports in just a minute. Okay. Uh, any other questions, though, on the future transports? Again, the big thing, call screen has to have a date of service field in order to put one in with a future date. So that kind of eliminates the emergency call screen. All right. Next. <coughs> Oops, All right, so we do want to start talking about those recurring transports. So first things first, actually I want to show you another call screen as well. It's a scheduled call call screen, okay? So where my non-emergency call screen is on my dashboard, and I can still put in calls for future dates there, that helps me to you know, continue to dispatch out while I'm entering calls, sometimes kind of nice. The scheduled call call screen is another call screen I can use for entering trips, and this one is a little more focused on just call entry and essentially future trips because of kind of the way it's laid out. As soon as we get here, we can see the layout's quite a bit different. And instead of like different columns and rows, I just have the entire the entirety of my fields up at the top, but down at the bottom, I have a search section. This search section should look pretty similar to my run search, and that's because it's the exact same thing. So what I can do, the reason the schedule call screen is nice is if I'm putting in trips, future trips, I can actually look for trips on that day already to see how busy I am to determine whether or not this is going to work. Okay, So maybe... You know, I have somebody calling in about trips. You know, they have a patient. That patient needs to go on a series of trips from now until, you know, uh, the end of the year. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And they want us to put it in. So initially, I want to see what does my Friday look like. Actually, I guess Wednesday's coming up first. What does my Wednesday look like tomorrow? So I'm going to put in tomorrow's date of service. And I'm going to search. And when I do... It's hard to see because of the resolution on the server, but I'm going to shrink the search section. This gray bar here where it says search, if I click it, it shrinks the search section. I can see right now I have one call for tomorrow, that one for Mickey. So this one's coming in saying they need somebody, they need their patient picked up every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 o'clock in the morning. So far tomorrow I only got Mickey at 6, so that should be just fine. So now I'm going to enter my initial call. So when I'm putting in a recurring series, I put in the first call in the series just as I normally would. So the first call for this patient is tomorrow, right? First I'm taking them is tomorrow, so I just put in tomorrow's call like I'd put in any call like normal. So the call type, we'll go ahead and say is uh, inner facility, caller name, Mary, caller, it's a, another nursing home. Referred by is if it's referred by a uh, doctor, I can put in the doctor in here as a referred by. Date of service, so again, it's for tomorrow, so I will pick tomorrow's date. And the pickup time was 0700 for an 0745 appointment time. Then I have the patient section. The patient section here is a little different than on my non-emergency call screen. And the fact this is just the patient record. So I would need to know the ID or I can open the search up here, in which case I can search for that patient's name. And this patient's name, we used them before, we'll go with Leghorn. Good old Foghorn. So Foghorn needs to be on a dialysis trip. So I pick my patient. Then I pick my resource. So I think CWB was one of our nursing homes. Nope. CBW. Oh, was it CDW? Yeah. He is a boy. CBW. We'll get there. Perfect. Ah, that's right, Cedar Bay West. Okay, so I'm picking up from Cedar Bay West. 
We're taking him to read analysis, I guess, M-I-L. Bingo. So again, know the codes, I can put the codes in. Great, so again, the idea is everything goes in just as I normally would for his regular trips. This is part of the training. Priority schedule because it's gonna be round trips, right? We're taking him to dialysis, we're bringing him back from dialysis. Okay. Service level, we'll go with BLS. Part of our training company, problem, dialysis, problem comment, any additional comment information, authorization. If there is a prior authorization number for this series of trips, I can enter that in here. My notes. Scheduled unit means if I think, if I have an idea of what unit I might want to be taking these trips, and not just tomorrow's, but the recurring series, I can set that here. On a recurring series, not as useful. But if I'm doing a one-off and I think, you know, tomorrow morning for this one trip, you know, 503 is probably going to be available, I can set that. does not mean the system assigns it to that unit. It just will show me on my runs grid there is a scheduled unit field. So it tells me who I thought should take that. But if they're busy, I could always assign it to somebody else. Scheduled on, put 3058 in. Here is where things get a little different. If I want this to not just be a one-off transport, I'm not just taking you know, Foghorn once to Dallas and back, but I'm taking him for a series of trips. I'm taking him for a series of trips. I want to put a check mark here where it says set up recurring schedule. This tells the system, create his call for tomorrow, but also take tomorrow's call and make it the basis for trips forever or at least for a certain amount of time. We'll see how we set that up in a second. Right. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit this check mark here to save the call. The system thinks for a second. Then, because we put that check mark in for the recurring schedule, the system says, great, tell me about these recurring transports. I have this great schedule based on window popping up. Okay, so here's that initial call for tomorrow, the outbound, picking him up and taking the analysis. That's that run number, already been assigned. But it's going to use this run for a basis of an entire series. And I have a start date and an end date. Most important piece of information here that I want you to take away. Start date always, always, always defaults to tomorrow's date. So whenever I create a recurring series, the system always you know, says the start date tomorrow. If I create this recurring series on the 29th, the system will put the start date in as the 30th. All right. If, if I create the series on August 5th, the system will put the start date in for the recurring series on August 6th. Here, since I put this recurring schedule, I've created it today on the 24th, the system defaults the start date to the 25th. Why is that important? He already has a call tomorrow. We, we just created his outbound call for tomorrow. Okay. So if I say start the series on tomorrow, he'll get two outbound calls for tomorrow, the one we just created and this one based off the series. All right. All that means is when you set the start date, set it for the first day after his, the initial trip we based it on. So the initial trip we based it on is the 25th, which is Wednesday, he's going Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so 27th, the Friday, would be the next call that should be created in the series. So I can hit this button here to look at my calendar and say, yep, we want to start the series on Friday the 27th. What happens if we don't remember that and we first trip's on the 25th and we put the start date on the 27th? Then on the 25th, he'll have two outbound calls at the same time. You can cancel one. You, know, you can always just cancel one and say dispatch error. Not a huge deal. But the reason I bring it up is especially when we just go live, when we're new to the system, we end up getting a lot of support calls of, I got duplicate calls for this patient. Why? Usually it's because you set the start date either at or before the series. So again, maybe he's not starting till the 27th right? The system would start, put the start date as the 25th, and if I change it to 27th, he'd still get one for the 27th, right? So he'd have two on the 27th. So it's always whenever, you know, put the start date after the initial transport. 
whenever that series should start. Okay. Any questions there? What happens if you take a appointment with a weird recurrence where it isn't Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's not Monday through Friday, but it might be Tuesday this week and Thursday next week or two days this week, one day next week? Well, yeah, every day. Well, if it was every day from, uh, yeah, it could be like, we have yeah. some people in radiation therapy will go for a month. And they'll go nearly every day, but have different start times. So if they're going nearly every day, but different start times, I could select every day. And I could say, you know, Monday's at 7. I mean, Sunday's at 7. Monday is at 600. Tuesday is at 0800. Yeah, but what happens and, if... Say next week is a different time than Tuesday this week. Then I wouldn't want to create a recurring schedule this way because the system is going to put in based base off whatever I'm putting in here for the entirety of the series. At that point, you can create multiple series. You do by right? week. So yes. So notice there's an end date, right? So if this week it's going to be this way. I could say this ends on. Uh, uh, we'll go with 8-3, right, next Friday. So it's only a week this way. And then I can create another series for what the following week or what the following month would be because they're changing things at that point. That doesn't happen or often, but it should be easy to work around. Yeah. So I create the series for as long as that series functions that way. Once that series changes, I can create a new series for what that new functionality is. Great. If we have somebody going you know, like this on a recurring trip and dialysis calls and says, uh, we had an opening in the morning, can you bring them at 5 a.m. instead? Can you change just one, and then the other question, what about suspending it because they might be in hospital? So, we'll look more at the one-offs a little next time. Suspending it would be, again, changing that. So if I know, you know, if I think we're going to go till the end of the year, but I find out, you know, in September he's finishing for a little while, I can just change the end date, and we'll look at how we edit recurring series again uh, we, we're on our next call I'll spend a little more time doing these recurring series again on our next conversation too but yeah we can update that in terms of the one-off as long as his trip that they need to change the pickup time on is a standalone trip we talked a little bit about this last time we talked about it in our in our uh, configuration sessions so if it's based off the series still if it's a templated if you know that recurring runtime from outside of that four-day window, I got to wait time within the four-day window. If I'm within the four-day window and that one trip has its own individual transport, then I can edit that one transport without affecting the series. Okay. So let's let's finish this and we'll take a look at that once we get this series set up. Here we'll say, like I said, he's going to go to the end of the year. Changes for. Let's say they change the pickup time or something the day before. Remember, you can't change it until after. Get a sign 12 hours before would be the. And he was going Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And he will say, yeah, Mondays are earlier and Fridays are. Wednesdays and Fridays are 7, 7.45. Mondays are 6 and 6.45. There we go. Okay. So once I have his. Schedule set up again. This is all for his outbound trips. I can go ahead and hit this check mark here. System will go ahead, think for a second, create that initial outbound trip and the series, the recurring series based off that outbound trip. But then, because I picked the scheduled transport priority, the system says, okay, for his trip tomorrow, 
do we want to set up a return trip for him tomorrow? And yeah, we do. And again, it comes up and defaults to 2359, which is fine. And maybe, you know, his, you know, pickup is going to be earlier and you kind of know what it would be. You could always change that to a specific time. Otherwise, we'll just leave it as is. Priority goes code one non-emergent, maybe because it's a you know, recurring series that you're basing it off of. You want to do a scheduled transport. Either way, it's fine. The system, you know, it's up to you. Here, though, the system understands that, hey, that outbound trip we did for tomorrow, we based it off of, we used, you know, so we used it to base an entire series off of it. Yep. Maybe we want to set up a recurring schedule for the return trips as well, and it defaults this check mark here. Okay. <clears throat> I can then hit this check mark and say, yes, create tomorrow's call. And then also it again comes up and says, all right, tell me about the return trips series. Okay. And again, we'll say we're going to start this series of return trips on Friday. And we're going to go till the end of this year. The 2099 is just the computer speak for forever. So if I don't know how long it's going, I could leave 1231, 2099 in there, and the system will just keep going and going and going until it knows it's done, until you stop it, actually. Here I know we're going Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Down at the bottom is saying, hey, this patient already has an existing series. Do you want to see it? So I can hit this checkbox to see here's that outbound one we just created, when it's starting, when it's going to, and how many days it's going, right. and the times. Once I have what I want though for the return series, I can hit this check mark and save it. And now I have my trips. If I wanna see again what Friday looks like down in my run search, I'm still looking for Friday's date. I hit search again now. I can see I have trip, the trip for Mickey and then Foghorn's trips as well. All right. We'll take a look at what the system does in terms of the series, how it creates it, and how to work with it here in a second. But initially, any questions on how to create a recurring series? Again, the idea is create a call like normal, put the check mark in and tell it's a recurring series, and then fill in the days and times accordingly. I think that was uh, self-explanatory. Okay. Next thing. So let's see what the series looks like. So instead of looking for trips for Friday, which again, you know, I still get those three now for updated. I want to look for trips that have not been completed for Foghorn Leghorn. And I will search. And the system is going to show me all of his trips. Okay. I can see everything. Let's go. Make these a little smaller so I don't have to scroll back and forth as much. Give me just a second. And I want to see the dates of service, actually. So I'm going to take my column header. Remember, we talked about this with our runs grid and units grid last time. But since this is a grid screen, my results are a grid screen, I can take and move my columns around. So we'll put this next to patient. And do the same thing with pickup time. Move that over quite a bit. So are the first uh, four there that have been assigned um, run numbers? Mm -hmm. uh, so those are going to be on the dispatch dashboard then already? Nope. Because Friday, uh, tomorrow and Friday are outside of our 12 hours. Why have they been assigned uh, the run numbers already? Because the... Uh, first of all... The calls for the calls for tomorrow, these are not part of the series, right? This is the ones we created for tomorrow. So as soon as you create a call like we just did for Mickey, right? We created a call for Mickey for tomorrow. The system already gave it a run number as soon as you create the call. So when we created a series, remember we first created his initial trip that everything else was based off of, but that initial trip for tomorrow gets its own run number. Right? Gotcha. Then, cool. Oh, go ahead. So then where it says recurring there, is that where you see like uh, the 8-1? Mm-hmm. 
Well, that when that actually is assigned a run number, what will that run number be? The series. Whatever the next whatever the next number available is. Now, when it is it gonna? And I think I asked that question already, but is it gonna populate with an 1807 or an 1808? 1808 because the date of service is in August. All right, gotcha. Okay, so what's going on here then? So these are the ones for tomorrow. The system creates the numbers right away. The ones for Friday already have run numbers because I'm within that four-day window, right? So the way it works is if I'm within four days of the pickup time, the system will go ahead and create a run number for that run in the series. It's its own standalone record, meaning I can adjust those ones for Friday individually. So the facility four calls days. up and says, All right. go ahead. So yeah, four days ahead. You're saying, yeah, because that affects, because the other ones that say recurring, those we can't adjust yet. Correct. So if they call and say, you know, for Friday's pickup, can you get them at six? I can edit this one. To make the pickup time six. Cool. For a six six forty five appointment. And when I do, we'll save that. Doesn't show in the run search right away because the way the search screens work is they always show me the information based off the last time I hit search. If I want to see updated information, I have to search again. So I'll pick up now six. All right, that has not affected any of the other trips that weren't already six, right? That's something we did the Mondays at six. Yeah. All the other Fridays. However, if he needed next Mondays or next Wednesdays to be six, and I tried to edit this one, when I double click the run, instead of the actual run number, it's showing me this star TM number. This is a template. This is still that design that everything else is based off of. So if I updated this to be six o'clock, or let's make it stand out even more, let's say 10 o'clock, It doesn't do anything because it's not its own run record yet. Oh, okay. So it doesn't adjust the series. No. Okay. The times won't. If I pick, change the pickup or the destination, that will adjust the series. But the times won't because the times are based off of the recurring schedule information, which is found here under schedules. Gotcha. So if I want everything to start being 1045, I would edit these to be 1045. And that would change all of the star recurring runs. So long story short, if it has a run number, I can adjust that one. If it's star recurring, it's still part of the template. Any questions there? No. All right. So, kept you a little long today. Sorry, everybody, but I had some really good questions. I want to make sure we covered lots of those things for you. Um, if you do have any questions between now and our next call, go ahead and let me know. On our next conversation, we'll pick up, play with these templates a little bit more, these recurring schedules, talk about editing those templates a little bit. Uh, we'll also start talking about some additional functionality in the system, things like merging patients, uh, when I have the same patient in the system under multiple patient records, uh, creating new patient records, looking at some map things, stuff like that. Um, but at this point, and I think you guys have already been playing with the system a little bit, which is great, because at this point, you kind of know all the bases for putting calls in, dispatching calls out, walking them through the process, putting in future trips, all of that good stuff. So between now and our next call, uh, which let me go ahead and verify. I believe it's next week for our end user session three, but let's just verify that time here. Uh, yeah, so between now and next Wednesday, which is we have our call at 1130, if you could get into the system, start putting in 
test calls. Make sure they're part of the training company and the training fleet, right? Put units on duty, take units off duty, walk through the process. Do what we like to call, if you have the opportunity, dual dispatching. So if you're working, you know, live in dispatch currently, well, you're getting calls in, put them into our system under the training company so you can at least get an idea and, you know, maybe change the names, right? Use our cartoon characters, but at least you can walk through the dispatching process so you can start getting used to it. And then really what we'll do on our next call, the first thing is we'll start with some Q&A. We'll say, hey, you've been using the system for a little over a week now, a testing phase. What have you run into? How has it gone? Where can I provide a little more clarification for you now that you've actually got some hands on with it? All right. Any questions? on what we'd like to get accomplished between now and our call next Wednesday. No, I think we're good. All right. Uh, if anything does come up between now and Wednesday, go ahead, reach out to me, let me know, and clear up any issues you're having. Uh, otherwise, I am looking forward to that, that uh, session next Wednesday to kind of get in there and do some of that uh, Q&A, get a little hands dirty a little bit here. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for your time today. And I look forward to talking to you all next week. Thank you. All right, good deal. Thanks, Travis. All right, guys. Have a good one.